time. The first related to technology and uh, the assertion that technology, the, the, the IEBC server had been hacked, uh, people had put in different forms, the 34A that determined the actual election at the polling station uh, had been uh, switched among others. And uh, IEBC was uh, effective in um, producing evidence to show that that was not possible by showing the different access codes, the different access authorization, among others. And court ruled in favor of uh, the respondents and against the petitioners in that case. They also talked about forgery of uh, forms. I have been in an election. <laughs> I've been in, <laughs> in an election in this country and in my very good party. I won't go there. But uh, those declaration forms, the 34A, uh, that are done at the polling station, I don't know what we call them here. Yeah. Uh, DR the, forms. The, the, there are forms, yes have a lot of manipulation that happens. Uh, but Ray Lodinga's claim was that what we signed at the polling agent, uh, at the polling station, is not what was put on the IEBC system and does not tally with what was brought. IEBC was able to demonstrate and say, no, this is what was posted for all the 40, for, uh, 44,000. They sampled, don't they? Yes. Mm. So, but they sampled, I think, about 20 or they about? 40. 40, yes. And said, okay, these are, from this sample, what we see at the polling station is what we see on the portal and is what was used to verify at the center. So they also lost that. Uh, then there was the issue of 50 plus vis-a-vis mm. -vis the voter turnout. And uh, of course, that one was decided because it's arithmetic. Percentages are value of arithmetic. If I say it's 65 percent, there should be uh, there should be digits that support that percentage. I think the bigger problem was uh, okay. This number has voted. Uh, there is a number of votes that were not accounted for that went missing, and uh, the courts uh, in their ruling agreed that there are some people who don't necessarily go to vote for every position. I may go to vote just for the president. I may go to vote for just uh, the member of parliament and not vote for the others. And that may account for the stray, uh, for, not the stray, for the votes that were not accounted for, the ballot, the ballot papers that were not accounted for. Uh, however, even when you put that into consideration, uh, the differential is not substantial enough to cause a fundamental change in the outcome of the election. So that one was also lost. The last one that I thought was very interesting, the one that gave us too much headache, was uh, what we thought was a contradiction and, and, and an inconsistency in Article 138 uh, of their constitution, where you're saying that uh, these uh, commissioners, the administrators of an election, have to have consensus in decision making or it should be by majority and uh, you remember there were people who decided to walk out in agreement with the losing candidate because uh, the chairman could not declare a loser when well, they moved out read the same statement as Ray Lodinga had and uh, so in essence the declaration was made by a minority uh, and there was no consensus, consensus there was no uh, majority vote. So our issue was, can you allow these uh, boardroom uh, mishaps or politics to affect the decision of the majority of Kenyans? So how do we deal with that? And while the law was clear, our assumption was there is a mischief because at the end of it all, there is also another uh, uh, article, clause 10 of Article 138 that allows the commissioner to announce. And so for us, that was the biggest uh, gist. And uh, their lordships agreed that it was unlawful and unconstitutional for Chibukati to have declared mm. uh, singularly. We, we, without the other commissioners. Be, without the other commissioners. The role lies uh, with the, all the commissioners, uh, the IBC commission.
uh, however again it goes to substantiality that these boardroom squibbles you were having should not be used to overturn uh, the will of the Kenyan people and on that ground alone uh, it wasn't substantial enough to annul an election. Are, I, are you surprised, uh, Councillor Kenobi, that yes. substantiality as a test, mm. I, I believe born in Uganda in 2001, mm. has now been exported to Kenya. And, 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 and as someone who participated in an election, mm. and you say there can be some games played around the DR forms, I, 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 I'm keen to listen to you. Or uh, now, what the major differences are between the two countries? I, I, I think, one, substantiality is a test of common sense. So if uh, I come and say I was rigged of my five votes and my opponent has uh, beaten me by 100,000 votes, even though you give me those five votes, I am still losing. What, so in, 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 in other words, you, you are just mooting. Would you say so, the same in, a, in an election that was as close as the one we just had in Kenya? Because, yes, in the Ugandan case, you can understand mm. the difference is over a million votes. Mm -hmm. So substantiality as a test has some ground. But in an area where, one, you are faced with two challenges. Mm -hmm. You're so close to the break point of 50 plus one that any extra votes, I, I mean, any votes lost on one of the candidates can impact on the 50 plus one. So, so uh, again, uh, some of the details we haven't talked about, and because they gave a summary, mm. is that there was a demonstration that the difference, the differential uh, being discussed was uh, less, less than, uh, I think it was about 0 0.001. Mm -hmm. That even when you considered it and said, okay, uh, let, uh, let's give it to the losing or winning ca candidate, there would not be a substantial what, what change. Of, what, what kind so, of law is that in your view that says, yes, there were irregularities, but those irregularities are, uh, yeah, yeah, one, are, are not substantial? One, the, the mere fact that we are human beings, there will always be errors. There will always be a certain level of irregularities. But what we look at in law is what is the extent of those irregularities? Mm. Are they substantial enough to cause a change? Are they substantial enough that they actually hurt the whole process of an election? And uh, when their lordships were ruling, uh, the substantiality test, you, you, you have to look at everything. So, for instance, Chibukati announced in the absence of the majority of commissioners. No, no, no. That, that, that's, a different, that, that's a different matter. It, yes. it, it was a ground yes uh, for, in this petition, but it, it, I mean, for analytical purposes, it isn't, it isn't the most important. Yes. You, you, you look at something different in uh, that contestation uh, between these candidates. I wanted to pick up something. The areas that were not able to vote where the election uh -huh. was postponed yes. was one of the critical ones. So one of the issues raised is uh, there was low voter turnout in places where elections were like postponed. Uh, yes, and Kakamega, those were the Mbasa. strong huh. holds of uh, my friend Ray Lodinga. But there are two things that caught notice that generally, if you look at the general voter turnout, it was low. And it had nothing to do with postponement or anything. 65%. But also, secondly, they looked at reasonableness. Nobody had foreseen that... Uh,